Good morning, everyone. It's Dr. Eric, your fitness physician. I'm going to give you a short uh, PowerPoint or keynote presentation. And I'll do it in a, an audio just on the either on a whiteboard or just me talking, just kind of the uh, summary uh, quick points, too. Uh, I'm talking about, as you know, I love talking about the peptides. I use them a lot in my clinical practice with great success. And I'm going to talk today about BPC 157. This is one of my favorite peptides because it's so safe and so effective. It has so many applications. So it stands for body protection compound, right? So it's the one. It's basically the most widely used peptide in the world. It's been used for many, many years, decades, uh, actually, and uh, really no reported side effects or toxicity. So it's potent, it's safe, and it's very specific. And it's specific, but it, it's also very wide ranging, and it has some numerous effects. And I'm going to get into that a little bit more uh, in these slides. So uh, basically, it's interesting because it's the unicorn of the peptide universe. And <laughs> what I mean by that is that nobody really knows how the heck it works. It doesn't have any direct effects on cells that we can determine. It acts as a signaling agent and it upregulates many genes. And uh, so it can affect uh, epigenetic expression. And again, by signal, signaling uh, other uh, enzymes, other, pep other peptides, other proteins, other hormones, telling them what the heck to do. It, it upregulates what needs to be upregulated up and downregulates what needs to be downregulated. So it kind of, it's almost similar to the adaptogens and it just helps the body do what it needs to do. So it's actually was originally isolated from the gastric juice in your stomach. It's highly stable, it's resistant to digestion, so uh, it's one of the few peptides that can be taken orally. So it has a lot of uh, different uses and uh, forms of administration. As I mentioned, it can be given orally, but also given subcutaneously, can be given IM, intranasal, and even topically. Um, there's some pretty cool combinations of peptides that can be used topically for wounds and skin care, which I'll talk about on future video presentations. So stay tuned to my channel, guys. So one of the biggest things that it's for is it's anti-inflammatory effects, tons of anti-inflammatory effects that can it's basically the healing peptide, right? It heals tendon, bone, muscle, teeth, your cornea, muscle, bone, intestine. So one of the biggest uses I think is for my for my patients, even myself, I've tried it on myself, is to healing uh, injuries, whether it's tendon, uh, tendonitis, tendon injuries, muscle injuries, ligament injuries, and certainly awesome for healing the gut, uh, whether it's SIBO, leaky gut, uh, inflammatory bowel problems, ulcers, all these things. And then the other awesome thing is why I love using a synergy with the growth hormone releasing hormone uh, peptides such as CJC, epimorlin, etc., is that BBC upregulates the growth hormone receptors, so it makes it work the CJC, etc., work more effectively because the receptors that they are working on are upregulated. So sometimes they need even less of the uh, GH uh, peptide for it to work. So these work fantastic together. Uh, so everything there's a, the method to madness, right? They all work great together. So decreased inflammatory response to the BPC has a lot of effect on some decreasing some of those inflammatory uh, uh, mediators like leukotriene, uh, B4 thromboxane, and myeloperoxidase. Um, it can increase the secretion of collagen and again promote cell regeneration, proliferation, and healing. Um, as I mentioned, it can induce uh, some IGF-1 locally to help with the healing effects and the growth of the of the damaged tissue, repair the damaged tissue. It can activate such, en such enzymes as tyrosine kinase. These are all involved in healing and proliferation of the cells, which is a good thing. It can also induce what's called F-actin formation, the fibroblasts. These are basically, like, you, everybody's heard of actin and myosin in the muscle, but there's also actin filaments uh, elsewhere in the body too. And it can help with fibroblasts, which are what helps repair collagen and, and, and fascia and some of the other soft tissues. This is why it's so great for healing soft tissue injuries. Uh, I'll talk about later on, I'll talk about some of the other peptides like thymus and alpha and beta that also work on some of these and help with healing as well. So again, it helps not only with fibroblast, fibroblasts with the, the formation of this F-actin molecule, but also with migration of these fibroblasts so they get to where they need to go. So if you have an injured uh, tendon, tendon in your shoulder, for example, it'll help you help these fibroblasts get to where they need to go and heal. So there's, uh, and also to help with this healing process, it'll help with some of the expression, the vasculature and the blood vessels of like VEGF, which is vascular endothelial growth factor, and other ones too, like IGF, fibroblast growth factor, platelet derived growth factor, and transformer growth factor, which I've enumerated here on the slides with my, all these wonderful um, initials and ladders, like alphabet soup. So um, BPC also can help with cell survival under stress, under oxidative stress, which of course we're all under tons of oxidative stress every day from all the toxins, stress, etc. Here's a cool slide. Uh, showing the uh, impact of muscle healing. This is under uh, steroid application, you know, like prednisone, etc. You can see the damaged muscle after 14 days uh, with a control with nothing and with BPC. I know this may not mean much to you, but basically you could just see it. If, if you look, if you, you, you know, if you just looked it up on Google, I should have uh, put some additional slides, but basically on the right is what a normal muscle tissue looks like. Pink, uh, thick, 
etc. On the left, it's, it shows that his damage is it's thin, it's kind of disarrayed. It just shows some incredible healing. This is a cool picture of a slide uh, borrowed from one of my colleagues at the IPS from uh, corneal ulcer. It's kind of hard to see it exactly. It just looks like a bloodshot eye, but the ulcer, there's definitely an ulceration on the bottom, and you can see it massively quickly healed up on the, and below. BPC has a ton of other cool effects too. It's neuroprotective, protective for the brain. It can, it can help with nerve regeneration, decrease neuroinflammation, and it has a lot of uh, systemic effects in the body and from a neurologic perspective too. It has an antidepressant effect, and it, and it can influence the, the serotonergic, abergic, and dopaminergic systems. So all these neurochemicals and, and um, are basically important in the brain for motivation, for drive, for mood. Uh, it helps with, again, it has a lot of effects with, you know, people that have uh, abnormalities in these systems can have many problems in terms of, uh, like I said, motivation, drive, uh, can be depressed or overexcited or overly anxious if, uh, the ser if your serotonin, dopamine, or, or GABA is out of whack. So it can massively influence these. So it can help not only with, um, you know, such, issue, such issues, issues as these, uh, like talking like me, <laughs> um, but in terms of mood disorders and things of this nature, but um, it's also been found to help with ameliorate uh, the symptoms of alcohol withdrawal. So it has a lot of broad reaching implications. So it's been uh, it been in touch with the neuropsychiatric community as well because it can help so, so much with these symptoms. Again, some of these neurotransmitters and neurochemicals are massively important as we're finding out in a lot of conditions. And uh, this is one of many that can help with that. So uh, probably another reason that it's used in uh, t uh, traumatic brain injury patients too because it can help help get these uh, neurochemicals back in the, in, into alignment. PPC has a lot of uh, benefit for the heart. It's cardioprotective. It can help with uh, blood pressure regulation, uh, protect against uh, irregularities in heart rhythm secondary to certain medications, and helps with improvement of nitric oxide, which can help with the vasodilation of the blood vessels, which is obviously a great thing, uh, protecting again, protective against blood pressure and helping with blood flow for healing and uh, regeneration. As I mentioned, it's effective in TBI, traumatic brain injury, neuroprotective. Uh, and again, one of the things I really want to talk about is gut healing, tons of GI healing, whether it's ulcers, ulcers, GERD, which is reflux disease, or eosinophilic esophagitis, which is uh, becoming more and more prevalent, um, which is a, a form of this, uh, irritation of the esophagus, which can cause symptoms similar to reflux, problems swallowing, things of this nature. Has a lot of broad, re broad reaching implications for treatment for intestinal pathology like Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, or SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Uh, it can restore that esophageal sphincter pressure, which is one of the main causes for reflux and heartburn. So, uh, as you're probably reading more and more about people having problems with this uh, le you know, leaky gut, ulcers, uh, Crohn's disease, uh, SIBO, all these things, and it, it has massive healing effects. I've done it myself for some gut issues I've had. I've had several friends with esophageal uh, EE. Eosinophilic esophagitis, say that five times fast, um, and ulcers, and tremendous improvements. So this is a great gut healing peptide. Um, so I think most common applications, uh, again, is gut and soft tissues. Works amazingly well. Again, uh, we talked about bone healing, um, and it's also helpful for periodont periodontitis, uh, tooth infections, skin burns, and corneal injuries, as I mentioned. Uh, again, as I mentioned briefly earlier that there's a topical form for burns and wounds. It's also been helpful for things like food intolerance with secondary histamine elevations and for weaning people off chronic uh, proton pump inhibitors, which again can help with the gut healing. Some of these medications like PPIs, as we'll talk about in future uh, lectures um, on peptides, there's a lot of medications that can adversely affect our cells and our cellular function, mitochondrial function, and can promote the aging process. Many of them and PPIs are one of them. So if we can avoid these, all the better, right? So we can, it can be helpful for getting people off these PPIs, healing that gut. Um, so dosage, many ways to do it, roughly half-life of four to five hours. Usually we shoot for around 400 to 600 micrograms a day. You can divide it up, especially for injuries. Uh, oral forms, they come in tablets of 250 to 500 milligrams. You could take uh, two of these a day or more. People with severe gut issues can take up to a gram a day or more sometimes, for at least for a short term. Again, uh, some long-term studies have been done, and again, there's no reported side effects. People have been on this for months, even years, with no side effects, no problems whatsoever. Um, so, again, you could do it once or twice a day, especially if there's an injury or post-recovery, you can dose it uh, several times a day. So, we'll get into this on future slides, and that's it. So, wanted to give you a quick talk on BPC, guys. It's a great peptide. Used it a ton. All my patients love it. So, if you have any questions want to learn more, uh, please reach out to me, Dr. Eric, your fitness physician and peptide doc. Everyone have a fantastic day.